You are Leonard Raw. You are a godwoken and a thief. You keep your secrets well, even from yourself. You are Leonard Rawl, Godwoken, thief. If you can't earn a place in Lucian Shadow, you're going to steal it. You think you'll find advantage in the Forbidden Library. But first, you have to steal the keys. Your tutors have one each, but you can't risk getting caught. You'd earn yourself a trip to the Chancellor's Chamber, one from which you suspect you would not return. Your best friend, Redolus, was your rival. You knew that he was weak. You made sure the Chancellor knew it too. And while your friend was in the Chancellor's secret room, you stole the capacitor from the Chancellor's own table. But then you heard a noise. You heard the sound of your best friend's murder. You fled. You hid the capacitors you had taken and set out to steal the rest. You were lurking here, plotting, when you were overtaken with a sense of love. You felt at peace. You felt Lucian's hand on your shoulder. You did not feel the sword blade enter your back. A hunger rises deep within you, a desire for the spirit source. This yearning is not yours, but it demands satisfaction. The hunger dies away, for now. You pause. Lucian was the divine. Why would he want to harm anyone in the academy, from where his successor ought to rise? Tail as old as time. He secured his place and didn't want any upstarts to come after it. Hard to believe the Divine did all that. Hardly worthy of the title, if you ask me. Even an assassin like myself recoils from a Divine rejoicing in slaughter. The ghost's memories slip easily into your mind. His name is Kandor, and he thinks he's ready to ascend. He thinks he can be Godwoken, ready to step up should Lucian lose the war. He's wrong. He'll die. He did die before he even made it to the Chancellor to ask for permission to fight in the Arena of the One. And what's more, he was murdered. You are Kandor, and you are, you believe, ready to step up. Your tutors disagree, but you want the Chancellor to hear your case. Instead, you find a man you've never met, a great and powerful sorcerer. And as his shadow falls upon you, you realize that this is Lucian the Divine himself. He gives you a smile of the utmost benevolence and grace, and you realize, as Candor, that you are far from ready. You turn and flee towards the library to warn your tutors, but Lucian is too fast. He cuts you down. Your candor the Godwoken, dead by the hand of the Divine. A hunger rises deep within you, a desire for his source. The hunger dies away.
The spirit of a rather old man dodders around, seemingly oblivious to the condition of the room. He turns and offers you a genial smile. Ah, a new student. I admire your enthusiasm, but I'm just about to close the gallery for the evening. You'll have to return in the morning. Oh, come now, surely you must have heard of the gallery. That's the repository for the god Woken tombs. All the powers that a god Woken needs are documented in these tombs. The gallery is the most important part of the whole academy as far as I'm concerned. I will not allow it to be disrespected. I am Master Trevi, curator of the gallery. I'll be here at your service, of course, as you carry out your studies. But there's time for that yet. I'm closing for the night, as I said. The ghost frowns with confusion, then wags a reprimanding finger at you. You're new, so I won't report your insolence. But you had better learn some manners if you hope to make use of the gallery. I will not allow it to be disrespected. An elegant and intelligent looking lizard. She gives you a haughty look, then turns away. A hunger rises. The hunger dies. Her memories flow into you as water to a stream. You are Tarian Grey. You are Godwoken, but you will not be divine. You know this because you are in love with a colleague and rival. You are in love with Redlus, and he is in love with you. You have agreed to leave the Academy together, but now Redlus is missing. Redlus went to see the Chancellor, and you have not seen him since. You are on your way to the Chancellor's chambers when a man's voice calls your name. Lucy and the Divine cups your chin, and a gentle pain stabs your heart. Lucian smiles at you, and then is gone, and you worry so for Redless. Believing it comes from her own mind, she realizes the truth. She was murdered by Lucy and the Divine. Redless too must be dead, or he would have come for her by now. She bows her head and cries. She knows Redless went to see the Chancellor in his chambers. She did not know that Lucian was already there. She weeps. I think I'm missing something here.
The automaton fixes its illuminated gaze upon you. The light within it flickers for a moment. It addresses you, garbled. God war. God welcome. Come, come, time is short. Let's see how you measure up. Hmm, good. Very good. Normally I would test my pupil's acumen here, but I can sense that yours is well developed. An educator's intuition, let's say. There's always room for improvement, however, and I believe I can muster one final lesson. Intellect and reasoning come before all, of course. You must sacrifice an amount of learning in some other area in order to glean what I have to offer. Your sense of finesse. A fair bargain. True intelligence in exchange for a degree of sociability. Do you accept, Philistine? The spirit of a dwarf woman scowls at you, like you dealt her some grave insult while she was alive. Godwoken, you have no right to be here. Leave! The spirit's scowl gives way to a roll of her eyes and an exasperated sigh. Just... what was that? Where's your sense of authority, Godwoken? You can't expect to defend the world against the Void if you can't defend your own dignity against an uppity spirit! A lesson is in order, I think. Now, I may be able to steal you a little more in preparation for the trials to come. 
Improving your authority will cause your strength to suffer, however. That is the cost of molding yourself into a true leader. Do you accept? God, Walken. It has been too long. My hope was dwindling. Tell me, do you have your wits about you for the trials to come? Here, let me see. It is greater than the gods, yet also more evil than the void. The poor have it, the rich need it, and if you eat it, you will die. What is it? Oh, clever. Book clever, it seems. Not the same as true wits, but useful nonetheless. Allow me to reward your efforts. One last lesson to sharpen your wits. But be warned. Equal mastery in all skills is nigh on impossible. This lesson in wits will require a sacrifice, a degree of your constitution. The spirit of a robed woman casts a critical eye over you. Hmm, you're less robust than I'd wish, Godwoken. You truly should have put more of an effort into developing your strength. I can help to bolster you. One last lesson in strength. There is a price, unfortunately. To excel at one skill is to neglect another. Improving your strength will sap your wits. Do you accept? The spirit of a dwarf gives you an incongruously cheery smile, given his circumstances. Who do we have here? A new Godwoken. Why, what a pleasure it is to meet you. <sighs> Just what was that? Have you made no effort at all on developing your constitution? You're about as charming as a dog with worms. A lesson is in order, I think. An emergency lesson. If you wish, I can do what I can to bolster your... limp charms. Be warned, though. There's an opportunity cost in self-improvement. What you gain in constitution will likely be lost from elsewhere. Intelligence, I would assume. The spirit of a lizard is seated before you, weeping profusely. She looks up at you, moist-eyed. God woken. Can it be true? Am I dead? Of course, your hand passes right through her. You back away and shrug awkwardly. The spirit's expression changes in an instant, utterly composed and thoroughly unimpressed. I applaud your empathy, God woken, but that was the most ungainly display I've borne witness to in a long time. Time for one last lesson in finesse, I think. I'll have my work cut out for me with you. True finesse requires dedication, however. Sacrifice. In order to receive my aid, some other area of study must suffer a little. Your wits, I believe. Do you wish to proceed? Godwoken, come, come, good. 
that, as always, intellect and reasoning come before all a fair bargain. True intelligence in exchange for a degree of sociability. It is done. My knowledge is yours. Use it wisely. The correct answer, by the way, was false. My lessons have been taught, Godwoken. My reserves of strength... Godwoken, it has been too long. It is greater than the gods, yet also more evil than the void. The poor have it, the rich need it, and if you eat it, you will die. What is it? The spirit offers a thin smile. You do, Godwoke. I can sense it inside you, waiting to come out. Are you afraid of seeming boastful, Godwoken? Come now, show me what you know. Ah, very good. I could sense that you had it in you. Allow me to reward the clever pupil. One last lesson to sharpen your wits even further. But be warned. Equal mastery in all skills is nigh on impossible. This lesson in wits will require a sacrifice, a degree of your constitution. Take my knowledge and use it wisely on your path, God Woken. Farewell.
The spirit of a lizard is seated before you, weeping profusely. She looks up at you, moist-eyed. God woken. Can it be true? Am I dead? The mask of sorrow slips away from the spirit's expression in an instant. It is replaced by one of utter composure and elegance. The spirit applauds you. Excellent, Godwoken. You showed true finesse in your actions. What I would have given to have had you as a pupil previously. But perhaps there's still time for one last lesson. True finesse requires dedication, however. Sacrifice. In order to receive my aid, some other area of study must suffer a little. Your wits, I believe. Do you wish to proceed? It is done. I hope it helps, Godwoken. The world needs someone like you. God welcome. Mm. There's all intellect affair bar. It is done. The correct answer. God walking. It is ah. Alone but be warned. Good. The spirit of a lizard is seated before you. God woken. The mask of excellent. What I would have true finished. It is done. The spirit of a dwarf woman... Godwoken, you have no right to be here. Leave! The spirit sighs. Terrible. It is you who... A lesson now. Improving your authority will cause your strength to suffer, however. That is the cost of a wise choice.
beam. Perhaps we can harness its power somehow. I can understand this reads in the footsteps of the Eternals, but what that means remains... Come on now, back to the students' hall. There'll be plenty of time. Now, I think I'm missing something here.
cave next. Ha! Yes. Now, I think I'm missing something here. His memory comes to you like a hound to its master. Your name is Redless, and you are Godwoken. But you know that you can never be divine. You are in love with Tarion, your rival, and that love makes you weak. You hear rumors of a god-king who would free you to be with Tarion. You seek the Chancellor's knowledge of this king, but when you find the Chancellor, he lies dead. A figure stands over him. Lucian, the great divine. He smiles at you and bids you approach him. He lays a hand upon your shoulder, and his blade slices your gut. As you fall, poor Redless, you know that you will never see your Tarion again. Redless awakens as if from a daze. He takes what would have been a breath, were he still alive, and breaks into a run. Welcome to the Forbidden Library. Do not fear the truth, though it smash your world to pieces. Do not fear the truth about the gods. Redolus sought the secrets of the gods. Redolus sought the God King, and Redolus died at Lucian's hand. The gods destroy what they have made. You think them cruel, but they are not. They own us and will do with us what they must. A thought arrives from deep within, a single word, lies. Hunger rises deep, the hunger dies away. This again?
Your time will come, and sooner than you think. I thought I'd seen everything in my travels, but I ain't never seen a place like this. Let me tell you a story about Justinia. I think we were, say, age ten at the time. My pop was off who knows where, spreading his seed in that oh-so-charming manner of his. So let's just say the court had its hands full. There was a big reception one night, the ridiculous kind, where all the ladies wear dresses and all the men wear finery. Yeah, everyone looks starched. Well, everyone acts starched. So I decided to surprise all the noble farts at dinner. Snuck into the kitchen. They had a giant boar on a platter with an apple in its mouth. Longer than Laura herself, and not much fatter either. The cook put the lid on and set it down for the steward to take. And then I made my move. I dragged off that pig when no one was looking, and stuffed it in a floor cupboard. Then, I crawled onto the platter and pulled the lid up over me. Wasn't too long before the steward showed up and wheeled me into the banquet, none the wiser. You can't guess. <laughs> Some stuffy duke yanks off the lid and good old beastie jumps out. Caused quite the stir. Queen wanted me gone, but little cousin Justinia, she had my back told Queen Laura it was all her idea, and she got a whooping on her backside and sent to bed without supper. So the point is, well, I ain't sure. I guess that she has a good heart, but somewhere along the way it got soiled. Damn it. Damn it, Justinia. What the hell happened to you? The Black Ring's pulling her strings. I should have figured. But I've got to say, I'd rather she was just straight up cruel than simply too weak to resist an evil as flippin' obvious as the Black Ring. How could you be so stupid, Justinia? How could I? Gods damn it all! That Isbel. She will pay. We ascend, I suppose. Or someone does. I mean, your guess is as good as mine at this point. I should be asking you, not the other way around. Whatever we do, we do it inside the mountain. 
gods know we worked hard enough to figure out a way in. Nosa is pale and damp with sweat, but something has changed in her eyes. She seems more like herself. We're... we're getting close, Chief. For choosing the next Divine, you mean? Yeah, I'm ready. I hope you are too. I think... She stops short, her eyes flashing back, then normal, then black again. She turns away, covering her face. We shouldn't talk about this now. I'll be fine. I just need to concentrate. This is it. We're so close now. Why divinity? Or something along those lines? The lovers stare into each other's eyes, together at last. Tarion registers your presence for the first time. She smiles at you in gratitude. Redalus gives you a nod of acknowledgement. You know they'll leave now for the Hall of Echoes. They turn to each other. The automaton fixes its illuminated gaze. The automaton fixes its illuminated gaze upon you. The light within it flickers for a moment. It addresses you, garbled in places. Thank you. 
So this is it? The Temple of the One. At last, this journey is almost done. You've made it far, sorcerer. Too far. The Sallow Man may be dead, but his minions still swarm the island. My followers did their duty and bought me time to get here. I will honor their sacrifice after I go to the Wellspring and ascend. Alexander offers only a stoic nod in affirmation, his eyes glowering intensely. This is how it is meant to be. How my father intended it to be. Even here he guides me to my destiny. Of course he did! Every god woken here was a threat to his legacy, so he did away with them. Now, once I'm rid of you, I will be free to succeed him. I am destined to be the divine. Don't try to meddle with destiny. Alexander's resolve visibly crumbles under the force of your words. When he speaks, his voice is a croak. It's a curse to be a great man's son, you know. Truly a curse. How could I ever hope to lead the world out of darkness, when I can't even escape my father's shadow? Someone stronger than me needs to become the next divine of Rivelon. I think you have what it takes. I will do everything I can to support you. <laughs> 